Uther Pendragon, the King of the Britons, had given his firstborn son to Merlin. With his succession assured, Uther wanted to consolidate his reign. The king wanted to fulfill the prophecy that Merlin had once told him. This prophecy revealed that a great king would arise, uniting all the lands under a single monarch, who would bring peace and prosperity to the Isle of Brittany. Uther needed courageous allies to be that king. For this mission, he gathered the best and noblest warriors in Brittany. Merlin guided the king to a region where there was an exotic geological formation by the sea. The ancients said that the gods had established here the foundations of the kingdom that would bring light to Brittany. Upon these strong foundations I will erect the capital of my kingdom. This fortress shall be known as Camelot. To bring this colossal work to fruition, the king required his vassals to contribute a large sum of resources and labor. The construction of the most splendid fortress progressed at a good pace, but even so, it would take several years to complete the castle. But many were not satisfied with the construction of the palace. Some nobles did not want to pay those tributes, and the clergy hated the idea of a new capital being erected in a place so sacred to the pagan Celts. Besides internal conflicts, the threat of Saxon invaders destabilized Uther's government. The king summoned the armies of his vassals to fight the invaders. He did not suspect that some were plotting against their lord. Together with his council of war, Uther set the strategy for the great battle that would take place the next day. He knew that the Saxons were brave warriors. Therefore, using only brute force would not be the best strategy. The next day, Uther positioned himself at the vanguard of his army to lead the attack against the Saxon lines. Realizing the king's vulnerability, the Saxon leader ordered an all-out assault by his army. After all, if Uther fell, all of Britain would collapse as well. Uther realized that his enemy had taken the bait and instructed his aide to order troops hidden in a nearby grove to attack the flanks of their opponents. The king, in shock, was slow to realize why his vassals did not attack. Uther had been betrayed. Even outnumbered, the king and his men fought with incredible bravery. Uther was gravely wounded in battle, but even that did not make him stop fighting. The chief of the Saxon warriors realized that, to defeat his opponent, he would have to sacrifice a large part of his army. After all, the Bretons, like hunted beasts, fought with remarkable ferocity. He therefore ordered a strategic retreat, allowing the army to preserve energy to fight another day. The Bretons celebrated the victory, not realizing that it was a true Pyrrhic victory. Bring me the royal sword! Attack! Realizing the king's vulnerability, the traitorous nobles decided to remove him from the throne. Flee, my lord! We will cover your retreat! The king tried to reach London, but his wounds were shedding blood, and his enemies were pursuing him. Without strength, the king fell from his horse. Uther felt the life leave his body when he heard Merlin's voice. Protect your sword, for the fate of all England depends on it. Uther used all the strength he had left to raise his sword and stick it into a stone. You will never have this sword, and without it, you will never sit on my throne. Many tried to pull the sword from the stone, but they said that only the true king could remove it. Those who tried to usurp the throne of Brittany ended up murdered by their rivals. For many years, the sword of Brittany waited for the true king.